Because robots don't have any awareness of their surroundings that we don't give them, so dimensions don't mean anything. You can tell a robot to run 20 variables at once if you're willing to actually wait for the answers. And the availability of these could significantly improve science. The problem is that most robots that can do even the most basic work in this area, until recently, cost on the range of like 30 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand. Whatever the sales guy says to you, you don't match it. Um, so these lovely people in New York uh, set up OpenTrons and said, we want to try and make affordable lab automation. Affordable lab automation in this case means a few thousand. I think that the most recent price is about four or five. So it's still out of my price range. Um, but it does mean that academic labs around Ireland can now afford lab automation that couldn't. And if I were starting again and had received curiosity money from an investor, this is the first thing I'd buy. Um, it would allow me to set up experiments that were top class, better than most Irish scientists, to be blunt, because speaking as a former Irish scientist in an Irish research institute, you're still a human being, and the quality of your results is not going to be as good as you can accomplish with this. So this is the first thing I would do differently. I'd invest in good equipment instead of trying to build my own at every turn. This is the second thing that I'd buy. <coughs> Actually, probably I'd do this the other way. Um, this is the creation of Bethan and Philippe of Bento Bio, and their dream was, what if you could have most of the lab, basic lab equipment, that is individually, like, you buy them for like 500 a pop, which is already kind of overpriced in many cases. What if you could have all of these pieces of equipment squished into one little thing that you could put in your bag? And they called it the Bento Lab. So this is a mock-up of the soon-to-be-released Bento Lab Model 2, um, this isn't vaporware. I know people personally who have early access models and who have used them, and they are planning to ship them this summer. And I have faith in that. Um, but their idea was let's make this, you know, ultra affordable compared to the alternative, and also ultra friendly. So the Bento Lab is this big, and it includes um, all the equipment that you would need to do, for example, a genetic fingerprint on a human being or to falsify a genetic fingerprint, because just so we're clear, genetic fingerprints are totally yes. But um, anyway, you know, this is a piece of equipment that at about a thousand euro, I think is the, is the current estimated price, includes half of my previous lab, and is far more portable than my previous lab. <clears throat> so this, again, is an example of the kind of equipment that is coming out that is changing what it means to do science in an academic or home setting. There's no reason that you can't use this in an academic lab, and it's a lot cheaper than what most academics will spend their money on. Um, so that's what I would have done differently. Now what I ended up doing when I left my basement lab uh, and closed the doors was I shortly thereafter joined the accelerator for biotechnology startups that Bill Liao had founded in Cork, uh, which was then called Synbio Accelerator, immediately rebranded to IndieBio, um, and has most recently rebranded as RebelBio. So they're big on the rebrands. Um, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of transatlantic politics going on there, and also we just want to make it clear that this is the one in Europe, and the other one is the one in North America. So most recently, it is known as RebelBio. Um, I ran RebelBio for two years as the uh, director of the accelerator, I worked with some amazing people, both my direct colleagues and also the startup teams who came in. And the format of uh, Rebel Bio was three months, 50,000 US dollars, and access to a lab in that time, and a pool of mentors who we fly in and you know give a forum to help out. And afterwards, we give you a great big splash on stage. This is a photo after the uh, demo day in 2016, just gone. Um, and we try and land you investment so that you can do your next big thing. And we had a lot of really cool people that I loved working with. Some of them I knew from the DIY bio and biohacking community for years. And I was really chuffed that they would come over to my country for, for, for once, you know. Finally, you're all coming to Cork. It should have been in the first place. And, um, you know, starting their companies in Cork and developing these technologies in my own backyard. So that was really exciting. I was living vicariously through these people for two years. Um, one of them, for example, uh, is Aranix. The founder, Chloe, set out 
She had no peanut allergy herself, but she decided that it was a great injustice that peanut allergies existed. So she, she set out to make an allergy-free peanut, um, which is not only a great humanitarian gesture, um, it's also worth billions to the food industry. Because anyone who wants to sell anything with peanuts and anything else without peanuts has to have two separate production lines. Whereas if you could have allergy-free peanuts, you could bring those together and save yourself you know, millions a year, hundreds of billions a year for large suppliers. So this was a big business opportunity as well as something that could save a lot of lives and human suffering. And I always nudged our selection process towards ideas like this where possible. Uh, we had some companies going through doing very exciting things like trying to forestall aging through like advanced nutrition, um, finding new antibiotics in backyards. Uh, you know, there, there have always been like really cool ideas swimming around out there. And for me, it was amazing to find to like spend two years with these people coming to my home city and developing them here. So that was a lot of fun. I have since left then Indie Bio EU, now Rebel Bio, in the uh, capable hands of my former colleague Stephen O'Connell. So anyone here who has any bright ideas, I can put you in touch with this guy. And um, he's exactly as lovely as he appears. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm still looking forward to seeing where that goes, even though I've parted ways with it. At around the same time, um, we founded a biomaker space in Cork. Now, this is actually more audacious than an accelerator. Because there's a financial incentive to get people to fly into an accelerator, but why a bio accelerator in Cork? Sorry, why a bio lab? Why a bio uh, community lab in Cork? One reason is that the EPA told me to. So when I met them and asked them to give me a license to make genetically engineered monstrosities in my basement, um, they asked me if I could make a group application next time. Right? Like it would, be, it would just be more convenient if all of you people would get together and make one application. Uh, so I decided to disclose them. Uh, and we never actually did license for a bio labs yet because the need had not arisen. And Formal Labs has, as these things will, uh, grown, shrunk, it's growing again. Like These things come in, in fits and starts. Um, this is a picture of my favorite um, workshop that we held at Formal Labs uh, during our initial fit. And actually, the, uh, the gentleman in the foreground is here in the crowd, which, for which I'm, you know, again, dead shocked. And we were, we were treated to a demonstration of how people can use, again, off-the-shelf, inexpensive equipment to do neuroscience at home and to monitor your own brain waves or electrical signals or cardio, cardiographic signals um, to either out of curiosity or to monitor yourself or develop your meditation skills. Um, and we got a really good turnout for that one. I think we, uh, it was a free event and we advertised 20 tickets and ended up receiving about 30 or 35 attendees, which was fun. Um, I'm sure that the fire, the fire safety of it was not that great, but it, it was fun. Um, I'll get to that one next. So, Formal Labs is still going. We've merged the two maker spaces in Cork because that was a, a silly idea, but there were, there were good reasons at the time. But now we have one maker space in Cork. Um, we're considering renaming it to Forma Nexus because Nexus was the original makerspace, Forma Labs was the upstart biomakerspace. Watch this space. Um, if you know anyone in Cork who is into creative use of technology, by all means send them my way because we are trying to reach the right people, get them involved, and kickstart a great makerspace in Cork. And the biggest problem is that we're all too employed. Speaking of which, so I said that um, I've been toying with imposter syndrome here because I've actually turned around and moved in a totally different direction. So this is the first talk I've given on biotechnology and DIY bio since, in many ways, uh, relegating it to a, a, a footprint in, in my own uh, professional history. I hope to go back to biotechnology in a big way someday. Um, but I have high dependency children and a full-time job. So I am nevertheless excited with this full-time job. And it is a kind of like very different thing. So I'm now working with a company called Scraping Hub. We do data 